Did you know that our indoor lifestyles combined with an increasingly fast paced daily experience is bad for our mental health? Keep watching and I will explain how the variety of new research being done by scientists consistently shows that we can improve our well-being by deepening our connection to nature. My name is Bhavan and this episode we review Losing Eden by Lucy Jones. We trust Lucy because she is an award-winning journalist and writer. Her writing, which focuses on the nexus between culture, science, and nature, has appeared in numerous publications such as The Guardian and BBC. This book seeks to answer a question that I'm sure we've all asked ourselves. Why is it that we feel so much better physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually after we spend some time outdoors? Countries around the world are struggling to cope with the trend of civilians experience a decline in their mental health, which is leading to deaths of despair. A dose of nature may be a better prescription than taking some pills. This book seeks to accomplish two objectives to showcase how our human connection to the natural world is being severed and why this is harmful to our current and future way of life. First, the author delves into the recent scientific evidence that explores the relationships that humans have with our physical environments, which overwhelmingly proves that nature is good for us. And second, the pages in this book reveal that we are losing nature as we continue to destroy our world through local industrial development and global climate destruction. The author wrote this book from a very personal viewpoint as she is open about her own challenges with mental illness and how her forays into nature during troubling times helped her to gain control of her life. Yet, she writes this book from an awareness that others around the world and future generations may not be so fortunate to follow in her footsteps and be able to spend time outdoors. While we may believe that we are fully insulated from the outside world as we live our current sedentary lifestyles, our human bodies crave interactions with microorganisms that we have symbiotic relationships with. Our physical cells need the diversity of microbes that are only found in nature, and we end up hurting our bodily functions when we remove nature from our daily interactions, which undeniably impacts our mental health. This new way of life is starting young, as children born and raised in the 21st century are not spending as much time outdoors compared to the generations that came before them. While there is an emphasis amongst anxious parents that it is the rise of technological leisure that compels the young to stay inside and look at screens, we must also realize that there has been a massive cutback in public funds that governments used to spend on green spaces outdoors. Our human desire to follow economic trends means that we are inevitably moving into dense cities and suburbs, which is shocking our minds and our bodies. The overwhelming sensory experience of living in an urban landscape, combined with environmental pollution, is causing us mental distress. The author provides evidence and examples that suggest we can lower stress and rebalance our nervous systems just by being in nature or even just having a little bit of nature in the cities themselves. Societal inequality affects access to nature as it is the individuals and the families with the means who will be able to mentally recharge by going outdoors. Nature can be used to reduce the health and well-being gap that exists today, but only if all people are first convinced that being outside will improve their lives and if they actually have an unspoiled environment to go to. The book details how we have not only lost nature sociologically and culturally in our collective consciousness, but we are also losing it physically as we are not fully aware just how much the wilds do not exist anymore. We are so focused on short-term consumer culture that we struggle to fully realize just how much of our individual everyday actions are leading us to destroy the planet. The book concludes with the understanding that we cannot simply tread water and expect that the little pieces of nature that we are able to preserve will give us brief periods of mental peace in a world on fire. What is required is not just small changes but a wholesale commitment to preservation and prevention before the symptoms even occur. Our solutions need to be individual and local, united with public political changes to create cities and communities that center on nature in the design phase right away, not just as an add-on. Our mental health crisis will continue if we don't save our natural world and reconnect with the wild.